Hey guys, so today I'm going to be trying out another Linux distribution. This is Bode Linux 3.0.0 and as you can tell from the uh, screen cap I've got there, this is the 64-bit version and it's the beta version as well. I don't think it says on the screen cap there but it was released on the 28th, so only yesterday, and it's an Ubuntu-based distribution which uh, uses Enlightenment 19 as its window manager. So um, I thought I might uh, give this a bit of a test run just to see if there's anything in it, because I know that the Enlightenment window manager which has often been referred to as a desktop interface or at least something in between a desktop interface and a window manager has actually got quite a cult following in the Linux community and I've never really become familiar with it uh, largely just because it's it's just not that sort of widespread well known and uh, by the time I was uh, when I was trying out various desktop distributions in a big way um, I think Enlightenment was still very much in its beta stages so I, n I never really put too much time into discovering it. So let's uh, have a look today and see if there's uh, any changes. Okay, so from the initial boot menu, you can see you have got a few options here. You've got the live, you can boot into the live system. That's pretty much a standard feature nowadays. Uh, you've got X-Force VESA, VESA, which uh, boots live but into a safe graphics mode, which uh, considering the nature of uh, a lot of video cards nowadays, particularly NVIDIA, uh, that's always a good option to have. I know that NVIDIA often clashes, NVIDIA graphics cards often clash with splash screens. So um, uh, I, I don't know whether, I think they might actually have fixed that problem now, but it, is, it was quite a, a common problem with NVIDIA cards. Of course, you can install it, do a memory test, and boot from the hard disk drive. And as usual, I am doing this within a virtual machine. So please be prepared for a few nuances. And also because it is a beta, there might be a few bugs that occur that uh, I don't think you should judge the uh, operating system too harshly on because, well, you know, uh, they, they're allowed to, to get these things worked out for the final release. So I'm gonna go straight into the install just to see what the install process is like. Uh, the install process to me is kind of like the crash test. And the reason it's the crash test is because um, uh, it's it's uh, with the live distribution uh it they they tend to work very very well most bugs most problems actually seem to come about at least in my experience through the through the install process but also i'd like to look at how easy the install process is whether or not it gives a few extra features and so forth so i did notice that loading screen which is the one that was used in fedora so that's that's pretty cool that's pretty cool and uh, i can see they've got the stock uh my, mouse mouses mice there Okay, so we've got a pretty basic setup at the moment, but again, this is the non-live installer, so um, again, uh, you may wish to re re read the release notes. We want English. So yeah, I mean, just off the bat, we have, uh, do we want to download updates while installing? Install third party? No, no. I'm actually recording this on a Tuesday morning, and thanks to BT Internet. The internet is not great around this time. This is when all the businesses are starting up, so I think it might just drag out the length of this video uh, if I were to do that. But we've got at least 3.7 gigabytes available on our virtual drive, and of course we are connected to the internet. So we can continue, but usually I would download updates and uh, do, do, uh, do all that stuff. Okay, so our currently our system currently has no detected operating systems. What would you like to do? Erase and install Bodhi. So this is looking very much just like the standard Ubuntu install system, which I was kind of expecting it being based on an Ubuntu, on the, on the latest Ubuntu. So with Ubuntu release only being what, like a week or so ago, uh, we can expect to see a good number of distributions uh, following in its footsteps. So, okay, we've got um, install, uh, yep, just the locational stuff now. So, Bodhi is actually quite a popular Linux distribution, actually. Um, I'll check to see how popular exactly it is. Okay, so it picks up the British keyboard, which is a little nuanced. In fact, I believe that most British people have their keyboards incorrectly set to the American standard. I can't verify this person, uh, I, can, I can only verify this personally by the analytics that I'm involved with, but usually when I put like a very British specific website out, uh, up on the internet, one that like, if you're not from Britain, you just wouldn't have any interest in, in, in viewing it. Um, and I still get about 
60 to 70 percent of users uh, come up as as American US users uh, when in fact it's really just British users that have their settings incorrectly set um, because you don't tell because there's only a few key I think it's like the at and the, the quotation marks which are switched around that's the, there's a few little nuances there but for all intents and purposes I think it's panic at the Apollo said that it's it's a bit crazy actually that they have uh, two separate keyboards one for US one for UK and it is really it is okay so log in automatically pick a username but uh, why have you given me that as a standard username okay we've got the uh, the virtual box must start with a lowercase letter that's an interesting that's that's the Maybe that's got something to do with directory structure, I don't know. Okay, and we've got the same same options here. I can't remember whether or not that's a requirement in, in Ubuntu. Well, regardless, onward. Okay, so we've got an unable to load page here. Permission denied. That's just a local thing. Do you want to try that again? This isn't uh, particularly important. This is just uh, what the slideshow would be if uh, during the install process. So while it's installing, I've got up here on my second monitor the distrowatch.com, which for those of you that don't know, distrowatch, D-I-S-T-R-O-W-A-T-C-H.com, a fantastic website, and it has page hit rankings. It basically ranks um, all the uh, operating systems in order of um, their popularity of their website. So, uh, Linux Mint, surprisingly enough, is at the top. It's currently considered by this particular way of measuring it the most popular Linux distribution by quite far. But out of all of them which are ranked, Bodhi is the 22nd most popular Linux distribution, which might sound like it's quite far down the list, but when you look at the fact that there are probably about 200 active Linux distributions, Bodhi actually comes up in the top 10% there. Um, and then it's you know its company is Zubuntu for example Slackware, uh, Open Mandriva, uh, Ubuntu GNOME which is twenty sixth in the rankings there, Kubuntu twenty seventh so and it's beating TinyCore, Sabion, PCBSD. Um, so it's beating some pretty well known names. Peppermint it's beating, Gentoo, SteamOS although SteamOS is rising up very quickly in the charts. In fact, I would actually, because this uh, particular chart actually measures um, the popularity of the website rather than the popularity of the distribution, uh, I'd, I'd really expect Steam to be running away with that. Um, so, and, uh, yeah, at the top you've got Mint, Ubuntu, Debian, Mangia, Fedora, OpenSUSE, Arch Linux, PC, Linux OS, Puppy. So, um, so you've got all the, all the big names at the top there. And, yeah, this is 22nd. Lubuntu. Lubuntu is 15. So Lubuntu, the LXDE one, which I featured in my last um, uh, video of this type, actually is uh, is the 15th most popular Linux distribution, and um, um, and and the second most popular Ubuntu uh, Ubuntu distribution. I mean, Mint is the most popular Ubuntu based distribution because. Mint is, of course, based on Ubuntu. Okay, so we need to restart the computer in order to use the new installation. So, let's get a restarting. Okay, so sometimes we have a little bit of a problem with um, rebooting on virtual machines. But um, that's just the nature of virtual machines, then, rather than any bug in the inherent... Uh, software, but believe it or not, we have not ha we do not have that bug with Bodhi Linux. So that's not bad. So yeah, I'm pers I'm considering this a uh, the Enlightenment Community Edition, kind of what L um, Lubuntu was before it became official, kind of like what Zubuntu was before it became official. And Lubuntu and Zubuntu are, you know, pretty damn popular now. Um, okay, so <clears throat> we can log in. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe that I did say to log in automatically, but uh, but I might have uh, might have forgotten to do that actually. Okay, so this is um, enlightenment. 
So you can obviously tell that it's uh, got an Ubuntu inspired theme here. Um, but the first thing I do immediately notice is that it doesn't actually look particularly polished. Uh, I don't know whether or not that's just beta. Um, it's always difficult with Linux distributions uh, when you've got the alpha beta stages of, uh, of de development because some distributions will consider beta to be, um, they'd have locked down all their features and choices and uh, themes and all that kind of stuff and they're just working out the bugs. And some people will consider beta to be where they're still actually putting in features and RC, the release candidate, would actually be where they've actually nailed down all the features and now they're just getting out the, the bugs. Um, so it's always a little bit difficult to pin down what, how much of this is actually going to change for final release. I would say probably not that much actually. Generally speaking with uh, distributions, I don't try, you know, with betas, alphas obviously, you give them a bit more of a, of a free pass, but... Uh, so uh, what do we got here? Install software. Updates, updates. So that's our update thing here. Uses the same icon as the Mint update tool. Um, our system is updated. Um, run the package manage manager. Okay. Let's see what our package manager looks like. So these all look very light apps. I do know that Enlightenment is known for being a, like a light, on the lightweight side of things, uh, but it doesn't have the lightweight credibility that uh, LXDE and even Zubuntu have. But um, okay, there we go. So is this our this is our system updater? We can update DPKG, EPAD, eSudo. So these are things, these are these are not applications that we have. Let's have a look at uh, the bundled applications. And this is again why I like to do the install process um, and test it as the install process rather than the live process is because sometimes the live process, uh, the live uh, version of the distribution doesn't have all of the applications. Um, so applications, accessories, mm, no accessories. Preferences, no applications there. Okay, uh, Enlightenment error. This is very bad. Enlightenment SEGV'd. This is not meant to happen and is likely a sign of a bug because it's beta maybe. But um, you are using unsupported modules. Uh, before reporting this issue, please upload them to... Okay, so we can... I think I've had this bug when I did do the brief test. And I think you just press F1 and it kind of fixes itself. So we have... Um, oh, okay. Um, our applications have suddenly populated the menu. So you've got a text editor in accessories, you've got additional drivers, system backup tools. So uh, and it gives you a Midori uh, browser as the default browser, which is an all right browser, but, um, but I guess this this is a uh, about, about 670 megabytes, so it fits onto a CD, so it doesn't even fit onto a DVD. I really would have expected even the somewhat lightweight distributions nowadays to actually fit on a DVD rather than CD, but they've made the effort to keep it to a CD, and uh, at 650 megabytes, they probably have had to have kept this pretty slim, but I really would have expected a little more than just a browser, a text editor, and a... Um, and, and really the bare essentials. Not a complaint because I can't say I'm a particular fan of... Okay, so this is Midori. Double clicking on that kind of gives it that weird... Okay, roll up effect. So when you maximize it, yeah, I gotta say, uh, XFCE sometimes do this as well, where they put the, they have a like a toolbar that doesn't fill the whole width of the screen. I've never understood why that's done, because all the space here, the green space here, the green space here, that's wasted. But again, minor complaint because of course you can presumably change that. So this is Midori. It's a browser. Go to Google.com just as a. Just as an example. Okay, and you can see just from the slowness of that internet connection why, um, just because it's, it's 10, 10 a.m., which is uh, in rural communities, that's always a bad time to start interneting for the day because that's just when all the businesses are 
downloading their updates and checking their emails and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and a small community such as this uh, tends to not fare well under traffic. So anyway, we've got some updates, we've got some things. So there really isn't that much to say about it. Um, there's the theme. We can talk about the theme. We can add software. Okay. So it's taken us to an online portal for adding software. Let's see, let's see. Applications. Oh, it's come with Synaptic Package Manager. So, so that's good. I think you can't really go wrong with Synaptic Pack Package Manager. It's not the most user-friendly program out there. It's the first one that I actually learned to use and you can find just about anything. So you put your Firefox in there. It'll search it, it'll hopefully come up, and I'm going to assume, after it's done searching, uh, do, 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 do. kind of lost interest now. Um. All right, so if we minimize it, what does that do? Okay, so we've got the, the um, Bodhi Linux App Center here. GTK themes, web editors. So it's got its own online portal. I do believe Mint had an online portal. It's got an IRC web chat. Those are always great for um, uh, for keeping the community close. You've got a 32-bit and a 64-bit version. They've even done a couple of videos. Well, good for them. Good for them. Okay. I, I I don't know why more distributions don't do in-depth video tutorials, and if they do, why they don't push them more? Because because uh, that's the world we're living in now. So Bodhi videos. Um, so okay. So we got yeah, we got the package management here. You can see that it kind of takes a little bit of asp um inspiration from uh Mac OS oper uh, various operating systems. Um You got your Firefox down there. Um Okay, let's have a look in the repositories then. Okay, so what's currently selected? Uh, okay, so we've got Canical Partners, um, all the stuff from Ubuntu, uh, independent um, stuff. Yeah, so it's only the, yeah, the source code from Canical is there. So this is very much based on Ubuntu in the truest sense of the word. Um, searching for available I wouldn't expect we see anything interesting in the additional drivers but that's where if you had say Nvidia or um uh, you know or what like wireless cards often uh, appear in that uh, where you need like proprietary third party drivers so um yeah by and large um this is kind of what I expected it to be which is um ubuntu stripped down and put on with a shell of enlightenment uh kind of in a similar vein to how Lubuntu and Zubuntu do it. Um, they've obviously included a lot less of their software. Uh, a lot less software in general, actually. And I don't necessarily have a problem with that um, because I tend to install like a whole bunch of software when I get a new distribution anyway, uh, whether or not it's GIMP, Caden Live, you know, video editing, Audacity, um, VLC. So to throw on a couple of uh, internet browsers and so forth on top of that, isn't a particularly big deal anyway. So, um, so I don't mind. I, I think that the initial lineup of software on operating systems in general is perhaps, you know, like I, a lot of people put a lot of weight on that. A lot of reviewers put a lot of weight on that, but I don't, I don't think that's necessarily um, particularly important. Having a bit of trouble closing that window down there. Okay, so we've got, yeah. We'll just reload it.
Okay, so um, you can see some of the independent software repositories as well. So, yeah, by and large, it's just um, it's just Ubuntu scaled back, added with an Enlightenment shell. Um, it sticks to the core. Uh, uh, you know, it sticks to the core packages. It sticks, to, you know, with Synaptic and things like that. Um, it obviously looks a lot less polished, um, and I'm going to say that part of that might be in beta, because it's in beta, but largely because it's just probably doesn't have the size of the development team that the likes of Lubuntu and Ubuntu have. Um, but it has had a, a, a very good amount of success in re recent years, and um, and um, considering that there is a strong cult following following for the Enlightenment uh, 19 desktop, then I guess that's well deserved and it is filling a niche in the market after all. Um, again, I've never been one to use Enlightenment. I think that there are more than enough uh, Linux desktop environments, window managers, you name it, to uh, to be getting on with at the moment. I think Enlightenment just strikes me as, as, as trying to fill a saturated market. Although then again, I did say that about LXDE and LXDE is my one of choice now so take that for what you want but like i said there's a there's a, there's a common maxim out there that uh, people say that that nowadays all you got to do to make a linux distribution is just take ubuntu and change the wallpaper and then you know re-upload it to distro watch or whatever um so and and this kind of feels like that as, as a bit of the case but it also does obviously is filling a particular niche um that being said if i was an enlightenment user probably would be the direction that I would perhaps move in if I wasn't going to just get Ubuntu and install Enlightenment 19 myself. Uh, maybe it might be more appropriate for, say, lightweight machines or so forth. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I guess that's up to you guys, really, is um, is there a need for uh, a Bode Linux? To be honest, I would say there probably is, considering that it is, uh, what is it, 22 on the rankings now? Yeah, 22. It's the 22, 22nd most popular Linux distribution according to their hit counter on the hit the hit counter on distrowatch.com. So, so it seems to be um, that number seems to to speak for itself, really. So anyway, guys, that's about it from me today. Thank you very much. Uh, let me know if you've actually tried out Bode Linux. I think a few of you in the comment section have recommended it to me before, which is one of the reasons why, when the press release came up, that it uh, kind of um, resonated with me a little, and, and, and it was one that I wanted to do. So, um, so yeah, guys, let me know what your experience experience with it is, whether or not um, you've used it, you use it now, that kind of thing. Um, and just Enlightenment as a desktop as well. So, anyway, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and uh, you've been awesome. Take care now.